if you push through every single day and you just get it done, uh, it'll all be worth it at the end. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm Noah. Uh, our business is called Slabadabadoo. Uh, and we've been doing this for about, it'll be five years in August. Uh, started out, with my dad was working at a bank. He, he worked there for 10 years. Uh, he started chain mill, saw milling on the weekends. Uh, and he just absolutely fell in love with turning fallen logs into lumber. Uh, and when things started getting rough at the bank, he bought a sawmill, quit his job, and we've been doing this ever since. Started with the HM 130 uh, Max, and now we're up to the 136 Max. We've probably milled, I want to say 600,000 board feet over the past five years. Like we go everything from like pallet boards, you know, inch and a half, or sorry, four inch by half inch by 48s, up to big format slabs. Uh, we mostly supply live edge like slabs to smaller woodworkers and hobbyists. Uh, but we also work with uh, some of the bigger companies to supply lumber for them as well. Oh, they make all sorts of stuff. Uh, they do the, the resin tables, uh, they make charcuterie boards, cutting boards, bar tops, uh, dining room tables, bar, uh, kitchen counters, kitchen cabinets. Uh, I mean, anything you can build with wood, we supply wood for. Uh, and we work with all the local tree care companies and development firms, and when they clear land to build houses, if they cut down front yard trees, they usually just ship and burn it all. So we come by, we save it all. A lot of the times, they'll deliver it to us because uh, we're saving them money from having to dump it. Uh, so logs come in in the morning, we'll put them on the mill and mill them out throughout the day. Uh, sometimes we'll get custom orders for stuff, but... Uh, it didn't really start casually. I I'd say it started out pretty immediately. We went as full scale as we could. Uh, we start, like I said, we start out with the HM130 Max, but so we, we've got about 500,000 board feet stacked up air drying. Uh, we just kind of stockpile it all. Uh, we do mill to order for some people. Like if somebody's like, Hey, I like that log, mill me this out of it. I'll mill that for them. But for the most part, we just stick to inch and a half, two inch and four inch slabs. We started out slow, like no business makes money its first few years, you know? Uh, so we were doing well enough to keep afloat the first few years. Uh, and it's really just been getting so, so busy this past year. Uh, we've had the ability to go purchase a new property. We're moving from five acres of wooded lot to 25 acres of Ag 5 with a 60 by 60 shop, a bunch of uh, 50,000 square feet of storage, uh, like overhead storage. So many costs that people don't see. It's not like you can move the logs around with an ATV or anything. You need a loader to be able to move these things. You need a way to be able to unstack and stack these things. You really need like a tractor, a skid steer, something like that. So that's another hidden cost people don't see. You you really do want a building to dry these things. Like it's good enough to air dry it if you've got five years to wait. But solar kiln plans from Virginia Tech, if you use those, you can dry wood in as little as a few months. Uh, especially if you've been air drying it for a few years beforehand everybody's just really pleased i get sent pictures all the time of what people make and we post this, those up on our site as well uh, so we're just trying to stay close-knit with all our local woodworkers uh, i mean there's a few different threads of advice uh the first thing is to get a steady supply of wood really just work with any local tree care company if you just start calling people up they constantly have logs that they want to get removed because they'll go to the site, they'll cut it all down, but then they gotta haul it to the dump. If you show up to their place with the trailer, not only can they load it for you, but they'll thank you for taking it away for them. But, yeah. Oh yeah, that's what it's all about. We, we figure if you help everybody else get what you want, uh, you get what you want. Uh, and that's been working very well for us so far. Networking is a big part of it. It's important to every industry, but it's especially important to the sawmill industry. If you talk to land developers as well, we've got, a, I, I wanna say at least a few dozen different land developers that clear 20, 30 acre tracks every other week. And they're just like, hey, we've got all these logs, come and get them. But for the most part, the, the logs themselves should be close to free or very, very cheap. We work with a lot of people, they'll take down their own trees. Uh, and what we usually do is we'll mill them up and we can either charge them a dollar board with the millet or we'll split the lumber 50-50 after we mill it. It really depends on your area and what logs you're able to acquire. Like if you live in like Eastern Tennessee and you can get an absolute ton of cedar, mill an absolute ton of cedar, move it out to a different state, uh, you can get a lot more money. If you're just shipping out trailer loads or a pallet load or anything like that, uh, a lot of these companies that want this product, they will pay for shipping. We are just very intuitive thinkers. Uh, we, we both kind of just figure things out as we go. It's 
been just me and him figuring out ideas, finding things that didn't work and not doing those anymore. Uh, the past few months, we've been working on closing on a farm, uh, like I mentioned earlier. We got 25 acres, we'll be able to put a lot more of throughput. Currently, uh, this is a family property and then I go and sell uh, separately. Uh, I keep stock over in the city. Uh, and that's a lot less convenient for our customers to deal with. So moving forward, we'll have a full physical business front that people can visit. And that's a large step up, especially uh, if we want private contractors and companies to come pick up loads and stuff like that. We don't have to work around the weird schedule. We can just have people come by. You just got to be really hard headed. It, it It's really hard. It, it takes a lot of work and a lot of people aren't willing to put in that work. But if you push through every single day and you just get it done, uh, it'll all be worth it at the end.